today I want to share with you five that's 10, one hand, five <laughs> um, of the Le Labo City exclusives. I ordered these samples, much to my dismay, because they were very expensive. Um, one freaking City exclusive sample from Le Labo, $12. What? That's insane. Anyway, I ordered five of them. <laughs> so um, I want to talk about them because they're only available online in August and September, which means that there's not a whole lot of time if you're interested in these to try them out or order them, whatever you might want to do. Now, if you live close to Le Labo, I think you can sample them all in store. That's probably a better option because the samples are stupid expensive. Uh, but if not, they do sell these samples like you see here on their website and you can order them like I did. So anyway, I ordered um, Bay Rose, Gaillac, uh, Benzoin, Tabac, and Vani. You know, all scents that you might expect I'd be interested in. And I will uh, kind of give you my thoughts on these, but before I do that, I just wanna say like historically, I have not really had a ton of success with Le Labo. There are, you know, several fragrances that I like, but not enough to buy a bottle. So like, but not love. But I think most of the fragrances kind of fall in the kind of meh category. There aren't very many I dislike either, but just to kind of preface it, I haven't had a whole lot of luck with this house. Um, and we'll see that may or may not continue with these. I'll let you know in just a second. Before I get into each of these, I just wanted to briefly discuss the performance of them because I found it in general, none of them were beast mode, but they kind of varied from like very soft projection to moderate, I would say maybe like a couple maybe project a little bit better, but in general, most of them hovered around the moderate projection range on my skin. Also for longevity, I thought that they lasted Again, kind of in the moderate range. Some of them lasted a little bit better than others. None of them were like really short lived, but nothing super impressed me in terms of performance. Nothing was like really powerful. Nothing lasted like a crazy long time, but also nothing performed so poorly that that bothered me. So just to kind of clarify that, that was true across the board. There wasn't a lot of variation from one scent to the other. Um, so I just wanted to kind of say that before we get into the actual fragrances. Now I'm gonna just kind of talk about these. Let's do alphabetical order, because why not? Um, I'm gonna talk about them in alphabetical order. So we're gonna start with the fragrance that is from Chicago. And this one is called Bay Rose. So this one's going to be a pink pepper fragrance because Bay Rose means pink pepper. Um, and, oh, and it's number 26, or there's 26 ingredients in here because the numbers on there tell you how many things are in it. <laughs> so anyway, um, this one was created by Frank Vogel. And I think he might do a lot. Like he's done three of these. So I don't know if he just tends to do most of Le Labo's fragrances or what, but he's done three of these. Um, let me spray this again. I have worn all of these once. So I've worn them for a full day, one time each, uh, because you know, tiny samples doesn't go too far. Um, this one I did enjoy, and it definitely has a pink pepperiness to it. I also got um, like a, a woody kind of watery rose, not super potent rose. And then there's definitely like this sort of spicy clove note in here. So. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit woody, watery rose with that pink pepper that brightens it up. I do think there might be, when I um, I wore this, a little bit of like a, a musk in the dry down. I do think there's Ambroxan in here, but also like several fragrances that I've tried from Le Labo give me that vibe. So I don't know, it, it might just be me, but I, I think there might be um, some Ambroxan in here as well. But to me, this, if you like, um, not like super powerful, but uh, you like a spicy sort of rose fragrance, then you might be interested in this one. Again, it's not super loud, not super projecting, uh, but I found it very pleasant. Also, sorry about the dogs if you can hear them barking. <laughs> um, anyway, I did like this one, but not enough to buy it. So that one is Bay Rose and I'm glad I got to try it but kind of disappointed. I was sort of hoping I would really like the one from Chicago since I lived there for a long time and it has a special place in my heart. The next one up is the Benjoin or Benzoin 19 and this one is from Moscow. Um, so this one smells pretty much like you would expect for a Benzoin type of fragrance. Has a little bit of like an amberiness to it, a resinous quality about it. There's actually though, um, I think it's sort of like an incense -y note, but it leans um, in terms of the style of incense, like a little bit fresh and like slightly green perhaps. But like I said, it still has that sort of resinous quality to it. 
I get a little bit of a woodiness to it as well. Um, and then, you know, it, like I said, in general, kind of just has that traditional benzoin quality to it. I do like this one. Um, the like fresh greenness kind of takes it away from how some benzoin kind of fragrances can go more like spicy gourmand-ish territory. So this kind of takes it away from that to a little bit fresher place. Um, but I do enjoy this one. Uh, probably one that I liked more out of, not necessarily the most, but I this was higher up on my list of the ones that I tried here, but still not enough to buy a full bottle. Um, so that one is the Benzoin 19, and this was also created by Frank Vogel. The next up is one created by Anique Minardo. This is Gaiac 10, and it is from Tokyo. And um, this one obviously is a Gaiac style fragrance, Gaiac wood. Um, this one I found to be the most light in terms of just projection and uh, you know what it lasted fairly well but it was like very light the whole wear from beginning to end this one to me actually i get a lot of musk like a clean musk from it maybe even more so than the woodiness from the gayak it does feel like there's a little bit of a dry cedar in there as well and again maybe something slightly resinous but mostly i get a lot of clean musk with a slight woodiness to it that's what this smelled like to me um very much a skin scent in my opinion very pleasant but um very very light so this one the longevity was decent but the projection was the lightest of all of them and because of that i think i would hesitate to get it even though i do find the scent very pleasant um, i just feel like there are other fragrances that i have that do the same type of thing, but maybe project a little bit more. Although I do really like the way this smells. So that's kind of, you know, I guess when when all is said and done, I wouldn't buy it just because of the performance or the lack of projection. But the way it smells is really, really nice. I really enjoy that. Um, and if you do like those clean, woody kind of fragrances, I think you would like uh, Gaiac 10. Now this next one is the one I was most excited to try. Um, Justin from Stay Fresh Productions has talked about this one quite a bit because he got it last year, I think for Christmas. Um, it's Tabac 28 and this one is from Miami. Um, and you know, I love tobacco fragrances. So of course I was excited to try this one. And I do um, think this one was the most projecting. So we went from the least to the most projecting um, in terms of the performance here. Still not, nothing beast mode, um, but this one I do really like. So this again is Frank Vocal, and this one is not your traditional sort of sweet vanillic kind of tobacco that you see a lot, which I do personally really like that style. This is more of a traditional tobacco leaf. Like if you actually smell like dried tobacco leaves that come in like a can or however, you know, they're sold. Um, oftentimes they seem to come in a can. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, anyway, if you smell that, like a dried tobacco leaf, that's kind of what this smells like to me. There's not really much sweetness going on here. I would say there's maybe a little bit of uh, like a cardamom sort of spice to it. Maybe a touch of booze, a little, maybe a bit, but mostly it is that straight up tobacco leaf. Um, I do get some woodiness in it. I'm not exactly sure if it's cedar or what, but I get some sort of uh, a woodiness to it. And I really like this one. I do think that because it pretty much doesn't have any sweetness to it or just only the tiniest bit, that this one maybe some people would perceive as leaning somewhat masculine, but honestly, there's nothing in it that really kind of triggers me one way or the other. I do enjoy this one. Um, I will, I have hardly any left. I would really like to give it another full wearing to make up my mind. I kind of doubt that I'll get a full bottle, but this one maybe is more tempting than the others in terms of whether or not I would buy it. Um, so yeah, that's Tabac 28. If I don't get it this year, maybe next year, if I can get to the, the store to try it in person again or something, I would get it. But for now, it's like a, a maybe leaning towards no. All right, and the last one up is Vani 44. So there's a lot <laughs> going on in this one because it's got 44 ingredients. It has, excuse me, uh, proper grammar there, Tara. Um, so Vani 44 was created by Alberto Marias. Gosh, it's barely spraying. There we go. Um, this one to me right away smells like sort of a woody vanilla. It's not overly sweet, which I don't mind at all. Um, I really like woody vanilla fragrances. Again, this one to me smells like it has a little bit of sort of a resinous style 
ambery thing going on with it as well. Maybe the tiniest, I don't know. I was gonna say there might be the tiniest bit of citrus in the opening, but that, like, if it is there, I didn't notice it when I was wearing it, like, as it dried down, um, just kind of right now. I can maybe pick up something like that, but mostly to me, this is like an um, sort of resinous, ambery, but mostly woody vanilla. Um, do I need a, a woody vanilla in my collection? Absolutely not, because I have a bunch. Do I like the way it smells? Yes, of course I do. It's a woody vanilla. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say again, it just doesn't blow me away enough for the price point because these are not, I can't remember the price of these, but they're not cheap. And uh, really, honestly, for me to kind of buy something that's maybe redundant or not quite a love, but a strong like at that price point, it's just probably not going to happen. But again, like I've said, I haven't had a ton of luck with this house. I just don't think that the style of the fragrances matches my personal style for whatever reason. Um, there are several that I found to be quite pleasant, but nothing really blows my mind. Um, of these, my favorites will definitely be the um, vanilla, the tobacco, and um, honestly, I like the way the Gaiac smells quite a bit too. The Benzoin's really nice, as is the Bay Rose. I don't dislike any of these, but the three in terms of scent profile that I like the most are the Gaiac, Tabac, and Vanilla. Um, but honestly, I think the Tabac is my favorite and it is the only one that I might buy in the future. Um, so yeah, that <laughs> is kind of a letdown. I was really hoping to find a Lilabo that would be the one for me. And I really thought tobacco might be it, but um, like I said, it's nice. Uh, I just am not sold yet on it. I need to wear it some more. Uh, let me know if you've tried any of these. Also, there are like way more city exclusives than these five. So perhaps there's a hidden gem in there that I haven't tried yet. I just grabbed the ones that sounded most like me or sounded like the things that I enjoy wearing. So if you do have recommendations of other city exclusives or if you just wanna share your thoughts, that would be really helpful. Because like I said, um, they are only available like kind of worldwide, August and September. So like right now. And I think it would be really helpful for other people watching this video if you have insight to leave comments down below and help everyone out. Um, I certainly would appreciate it because uh, these samples are not cheap and I don't necessarily wanna go and spend a bunch of money on like five more, but if there's one that a lot of people seem to really enjoy, then I definitely wouldn't mind purchasing one or two more samples before uh, the window closes so I can figure out if I do wanna buy something this year or not. But uh, right now, with these five, not in a huge rush to buy anything. Uh, like I said, if I can try to back some more, maybe next year I'll pick it up, um, but we'll see. So those are my thoughts. I hope this video was helpful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.